हेलो लर्नर्स गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम नरेंद्र कुमार चौहान सीनियर असिस्टेंट लाइब्रेरियन डॉक्टर भीमराव अंबेडकर लाइब्रेरी गुरु जिम्बेश साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हिसा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द रोल ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ग्रांट कमीशन रेगुलेशन 2018 इन एड्रेसिंग एंड करबिंग द प्लेजरिज्म इन हायर एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन सिंस इंसेप्शन ऑफ द अकेडमिक सोसाइटीज द रोल ऑफ हायर एजुकेशन इज इंडिस्पेंसेबल इन प्रोग्रेसिंग द कंसर्न नेशन एंड अपग्रेडेशन द लाइफ ऑफ वुमेन बींग्स इन द प्रेजेंट इन्वायरमेंट it would be an aggregation to say that any country in the world cannot participate in the rapidly changing world and capacity building unless the higher education system of the concerned country stand like a giant and meet the international standards however from last few decades it has been observed that after emerging the applications of information and communication technology the orientation of the academic societies in general and research societies in particular has got drastic changed as copy paste has become easier thereby the issues of plagiarism noticed more to overcome from this issue the university grants commission has framed a policy and notified in the gazette of india published in 2018 let's discuss the background of the concept higher education education system is the backbone of any country progress in india university grants commission is the apex body which is meant for determining the standards of higher education moreover ugc is the main funding agency for promoting the higher education so far in india further As UGC Act 1956 it is mandated to fix the parameters which help to cope up with the international standards of education the assessment of the academic and research works which are being pursued by the students and scholars in higher education institutes in the form of research paper book chapter book dissertations and thesis for partial and fulfillment of the degrees will be observed in various relevant processes adopted by the higher educational institution in the short form you can say that HEI to create the transparency and maintain the quality therefore ugc exercises its power under clause j of section 12 read with clauses f and g of sub section 1 of section 26 ugc act 1956 the regulation made by the university grants commission wide which everything has been defined in a certain way as of now under this regulation the students and the supervisors are at least safe from the accusation of the plagiarism as they have the guidelines thereby they make remedial steps in anticipation or before final submission if any issue pertaining by this tef mode more participation in the research activities may increase even accelerate the quality and quantity of research at national and international level in fact would be capable enough to sustain in the competitive environment globally now see the definitions of plagiarism and academic integrity so that we may easily understand what is the basic meaning of the plagiarism few important definitions have been noticed which are really worthful and capable enough to define the concept even after undergoing these definitions a general student can easily understand the meaning of plagiarism these are as under according to cambridge dictionary the process or practice of using another person's ideas or work and pretending that it is your own that is also very serious concern of the plagiarism according to merriam webster dictionary to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another one as own again it is very serious concern use another production without crediting the source of original information according to oxford dictionary plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else work or ideas and passing them off as one's own even in encyclopedia britannica which is we can say that the backbone of the ocean of the knowledge it is known as fraudulence forgery piracy practices which are in violation of copyright law according to university grants commission regulation 2018 plagiarism means the practice of taking someone else work or idea and passing them as one's own this is the serious concern even in the layman definition we see when you take the material from another sources and quote the same in your own research work without citing the original source of information that is again a very serious concern of the plagiarism for better understanding of the plagiarism for students have to undergo with the following terms which are similar to the same every ins and outs may get cleared and avoided during research the related words are as under infringement piracy falsification appropriation fraud borrowing theft stealing and cribbing to understand the basics of the plagiarism we have to understand each and every concept regarding this even 
the related terms we have to understand so that during our research activity we can easily curb and avoid the same and in UGC regulation 2018 they have defined each and everything even they have defined higher education institutions higher education institution means a university recognized under section 2f of the UGC act 1956 or an institution deemed to be university under section 3 of the UGC act 1956 or an affiliating college institution or a constituent unit of a university further in HEIs HEIs means higher educational institutions where whatever research work is being conducted the same will be evaluated at different stages for more transparency university grants commission has taken the initiative under the ACES of Inflivnet to create an online repository namely Shodh Ganga under this initiative the HEIs have to sign the MOU for Shodh Ganga repository and thereafter they can send theses for uploading into repository but the contents must be original one for the same the Inflivnet provides the anti-plagiarism tool to the institution which is established under the above mentioned clause and signed MOU with the Inflivnet for Shodh Ganga repository but we have to careful here only those institutions can take the services of the Inflivnet of the anti-plagiarism tool those who are under 12b 12b means those they are eligible for central assistance they have to sign MOU then Inflivnet provides the service free services of deterrence tool or you can say that anti-plagiarism tool and the name of the same is Urkund moreover individual is also eligible to upload his document into Shodhganga repository but the contents must be original one otherwise the concerned scholar has to face the accusation of plagiarism and may be punished accordingly this is the responsibility of the HEIs to aware the students about the plagiarism at entry level and to learn them to conduct the fair research therefore the higher education institutions play a significant role in promoting the quality and plug free research hence all HEIs need to be well equipped with the state of the art tools objectives of the regulation is as under to create awareness about academic integrity and fair conduct of research thesis dissertation project report book number two to establish control mechanism through training and education to facilitate plagiarism free research number three to develop system to detect plagiarism and create awareness about the punishments number four to aware the scholars about the remedies and role of higher educational institute the question is that is present plagiarism regulation capable enough to cover all academic disciplines this is the major challenge in front of the stakeholders and this is the valid question on the part of the researcher as well as the HEIs also though at initial stage the present regulation is effective as the scholars are being tried to understand the same however the author personally feels that the students are not much familiar with the same as everyday authors attends five to six queries daily regarding plagiarism not only from his native university even from outside state universities also however imaging outcome observation is that only few students ask about the regulation 2018 when authority try to know the region the students give excuse that they know that one notification which is brought by the university grants commission for curbing the plagiarism but they did not undergo with the same fully but partial they understand in addition to this author finds that when regulatory bodies in india have made so many tiers of education system like social sciences, humanities, arts, commerce, sciences, applied sciences, technology and many more. Therefore, how it is feasible that a single policy shall be effective for all disciplines. As every broader discipline having numerous sub-disciplines and every sub-discipline having different kinds of research methodology for conducting the research in its core areas. Hence, in the coming years, the University Grants Commission has to frame plagiarism policy according to discipline so that every scholar may conduct research without any fear of accusation and may be able to justify the same is plagiarism and similarity same again this is very genuine question because we always confuse in similarity as well as the plagiarism we feel that plagiarism and the similarity both are the same thing but by literary meaning as well as by functional point of view both are totally different both feel that plagiarism and similarity are synonyms and by literary meaning also but both are different terms even when any scholar uploads his her documents for checking the plagiarism level the software shows only the similarity of text during report for example if software is showing 30 percent similarity or more it doesn't mean that the concerned research document is 35 percent plagiarized 
it simply means that 35% is the similarity level which need to be further analyzed by identifying the plagiarism. However, instantly few questions post in the mind of the supervisor and scholar that how they will identify that how much percentage be considered under plagiarism out of 35% similarities. This is the illusion in the mind of the both. Moreover, in absence of this knowledge, the scholar faces lot of problems whereas the research documents writes with due consent of the instructor. Hence, instructor is the final arbiter to decide what works shall be considered under plagiarism and what shall be out of plagiarism. However, author personally feels that the analysis of report practice is missing in our academics. As supervisor simply gives a statement to his or scholar, the similarity report of the research document must be below 10% or 10%. Then it would be final as depicted by many studies even. Author personally conducted so many interviews with his native university scholars. Hence, to learn about analysis of report must be mandated. And how to complete this without any illusion? The supervisor have to be trained time to time. Duties of Higher Education Association Regulation 2018 precisely define the role of HEI in curbing the plagiarism and aware about the academic integrity by conducting the responsible conduct research and using the deterrence tool. The following role activities shall be done on the part of the HEIs to prevent plagiarism and promote academic integrity, awareness programs and training. Training is very significant concept for success of any program. It is made clear through training HEIs shall aware the students, scholars, faculty about proper citation, attribution, acknowledgement and proper seeking permission of the author wherever necessary. The training must be conducted in every semester so that students may get very much familiar with the same and take remedial steps in anticipation. If any plagiarism prevailed, HEI shall conduct sensational seminars to create the awareness about the ethics of research. Thereby, academic integrity may be promoted. HEI shall take the initiative to include the cardinal principles of academic integrity in the slavery of undergraduate or postgraduate as a mandate coursework. HEI shall make the arrangement for any one state of the art deterrence tool for checking the similarity level of any research document so that before final submission, document may be modified. If similarity index is on higher side, HEI shall train the students, scholars and faculty members how they shall operate the data tool for checking the similarity and fix the plagiarism among similarities. HEI shall motivate the students to register themselves with international researcher registry systems. HEI shall initiated to formulate a sound and seamless policy on plagiarism and get approved the same from relevant regulatory body and implement the same in total. HEI shall it mandate that each supervisor shall submit a certificate that the research which is carried out by the scholar under his or her supervision is original one and plagiarism free. HEI shall sign MOU with Inflamenet for Shodh Ganga repository and shall ensure to send the soft copies of the thesis to Inflamenet for uploading into a repository in a stipulated time period. HEI shall create the institutional repository which would be accessible on institute website and shall include thesis, dissertation, research paper, book chapter and other in-house publications. Works exclusion from plagiarism is very valid question because this is very important here what you have to exclude during your checking of the similarity through any deterrence tool. These are number one to maintain the level of similarity in any research work what work shall be excluding during check for similarity and plagiarism. It is totally dependent upon the policy of plagiarism to determine what are the works be excluded from the plagiarism. The present regulation exclude the following. That is very, very important. All quoted works reproduced with all necessary permission or attribution. Number two, all references, bibliography, table of content, preface, acknowledgements. Number three, all generic terms, laws, standard symbols and standard equations. Further, it gives one more privilege to scholar to exclude a common knowledge or coincidental terms up to 14 consecutive words from the contemporary works. The same may be considered as filter during analysis of the report when we apply the filter on particular deterrence tool. However, the core area like abstract, summary, hypothesis, observations, results, conclusions and recommendations must be unique one. At With these concepts, zero tolerance policy is available. However, with this filter, Few confusions prevailed, that is how scholar will identify that this is a common knowledge and coincidental terms. 
it does vary scholar to scholar for example sky is blue this is universal truth as sky's color remains blue forever but if it is the name of any fiction in this manner it won't be the part of the common knowledge moreover which 14 words shall be considered as excluded from whole documents again it is not clear therefore it would be determined by the supervisor this is her de discretion what might be considered under common knowledge or coincidental terms and what not be complained against plagiarism there is a issue that to whom you will complain because we believe in the networking and when we feel that some thesis your document is plagiarized and you know that this gentleman has this scholar has committed the same we always in a dilemma that to whom we have to complain for the same the university grant commission has given the suggestion the every hei has to develop a daip departmental academic integrity panel the academic institution suspects with the substantial proof that a case of plagiarism has happened in any research document the concern has to report it to the daip daip means departmental academic integrity panel after taking into consideration the daip shall investigate the matter in the light of the submitted proof thereafter the daip shall submit its report to the iaip iaip is the higher body that is institutional academic integrity panel of the hei the hei can also take sumoto notice of an act of plagiarism and initiate proceeding under this regulation 2018 all such cases will be investigated by the iaip however it is made clear in the mind of the students scholars and faculty members about the constitution's composition of the dip and ip committees and its power also and which one is the superior body departmental academic integrity is having the following composition dip all departments in hei shall constitute a dip whose composition shall be given below head of the department would be the chairman of the dip one senior academic academician outside of the department shall be nominated by the hei a person who is well equipped with the working of the deterrence tools to be nominated by the head of the department the tenure of the member in case of b and c point shall be 2 years and quorum for meetings shall be 2 out of 3 including chairman of the dip while taking trial of the case or decision the dip shall follow the rule of natural justice moreover dip has the power to assess the level of plagiarism and decide the punishment accordingly the most significant power of the dip is that after investigation the matter the report shall be submitted with the recommendations of the punishments to be imposed to iaip within a period of 45 days from the date of receipt of complaints or initiation of the proceedings on the same pattern the iaip is having the same composition but it contains four members as one shall be out of the hei to be nominated by the vice chancellor or the pro vice chancellor or head of the hei one more difference is that the chairman of the dip and iaip shall not be the same the tenor of the committee including chairman shall be 3 years instead of 3 2 years and the quorum of for meetings shall be 3 out of 4 including chairman the following is the jurisdiction of the iaip the iaip shall consider the recommendations of dip the iaip shall also investigate the cases under the provisions mentioned in the regulation 2018 during investigation of any case the iaip shall follow the rule of natural justice the iaip shall have the power to review recommendations of the iip even penalties also if any iip shall send the report after investigation and the recommendation on penalties to be imposed to the head of the hei within a period of 45 days from the date of receipt of the recommendation of dip complaints and initiation of the proceedings the iip shall provide the copy of report to the person whom inquiry report is submitted however if any member including chairman of dip and iip finds accused under plagiarism they shall have to excuse from the meetings where their cases are being investigated discussed and the same punishments which are mentioned in the regulation 2018 shall be applicable if proved in addition to the above it is the sole responsibility of the hcis to ensure the proper mechanism to check the plagiarism of any research document of students scholars teachers before forwarding public submission thereby if anything under suspect the same may be rectified before final submission and a plug free document may be submitted hence quality may be maintained accordingly level of plagiarism to decide the level of similarity which is under permissible limit which is out of 
permissible limit. So, University Grant Commission has defined some level. Plagiarism in any document, even level may be guide to scholar that how much text materials they have to change in their document to make the same plagiarism free. Regulation quantifies the plagiarism into different levels and arranges ascending order of severity. Level 0, there is no issue with the same because it considers under the similarity up to 10% minor similarity, no penalty. With level 1, similarity above 10% to 40% and level 2, similarities above 40% to 60%, level 3, similarities above 60%. According to the level, if an individual under above mentioned level 0, no penalty shall be imposed on scholar. Further, if similarities above 10% to 40%, then students shall be asked to submit a revised script within a stipulated time period not exceeding 6 months. Similarities above 40% to 60% means under level 2, such students shall be debarred from the submitting a revised script for a period of 1 year. However, if the similarities under level 3 above 60%, such student registrations for the program shall be cancelled. Besides above, if student commits plagiarism repeatedly, then such student shall be punished of one level higher than the previous level committed by him or her. However, in case if the plagiarism is committed higher level, the punishment shall be operative same which is mentioned in the regulation. Moreover, if the plagiarism is proved after awarding the degree, then his or her degree shall be put on abeyance for a period recommended by the Institutional Academic Integrity Panel and approved by the Departmental Academic Integrity Panel. The above mentioned penalties are applicable during the submission of thesis and dissertation. Similarly, penalties have also decided when plagiarism in academic and research publications. Level are same but the penalties are little bit different. As in research publication, faculty members are also involved. Hence, some categories of the punishment are severe in comparison to thesis and dissertation submission penalties. If plagiarized, again with level 0, there is no penalty as considered minor. But with 10% to 40% similarities, the concern shall be asked to withdraw the manuscript. Above 40% to 60%, the concern shall be asked to withdraw manuscript, shall be denied a right to one annual increment and shall not be allowed to be a supervisor to any new masters, MPhil, PhD scholar for a period of two years with level 3 above 60%. Again, concern shall be asked to withdraw the manuscript, shall be denied a right to two successive annual increments and not be allowed to be a supervisor to any masters, MPhil, PhD, student scholars for a period of three years. In addition to this, if plagiarism committed repeatedly by anyone, the punishment shall be operative accordingly, even disciplinary action including suspension, oblique termination as per civil rules shall be taken by the HEI. If the same is proved after awarding the degree, all the credits shall be withdrawn or put in abeyance. Last but not least, after undergoing the recommendations of the regulation, it is made clear that the things are defined in a very precise manner. Even in last, it is also mentioned UGC reserves the right to remove difficulties in course of implementations of these regulations in consultation with the Government of India. Ministry of Human Resource Development. However, to make it more effective, changes are required time to time. As of now, the author personally feels that few recommendations need to be clarified immediately in a very specific manner. These are as under. In similarity checks for exclusion from plagiarism, in note portion, it is mentioned that it shall include a common knowledge or coincidental terms up to 14 consecutive words. In this, which text shall be considered under common knowledge as it depends upon the concern in textual level and what 14 consecutive words shall be excluded. This is not cleared as author conducted an interview with 120 scholars of his native university scholars. After interview, one amazing fact has unveiled that no one was cleared. Out of 120 scholars about the 40 consecutive words, even when this filter applies on anti-plagiarism tool, sometimes it reduces the similarity index more, sometimes least effective. Hence, it is not clear in the mind of the scholars that what they have to do to make it more effective. Some more levels must be defined between 10% to 60%. As after 10, it goes directly 10% to 40% or more. So that scholars may get more opportunities to take remedial steps before final submission, oblique forwarding. Besides above, 
University Grants Commission has to provide the anti-plagiarism tool to the HEIs which are having financial constraints and positive funds. As many studies depicted that most of the higher educational institutions do not having the access of anti-plagiarism tool which is the biggest one issue as without tool how they will check the level of plagiarism or similarity. Further, if they pursue the matter to another institutes which are having the access of any deterrence tool at first instance they will not entertain the request and if they consider then they simply tell the level of similarity will not hand over the report as plagiarism is a legal issue and punitive element as of now thereby by this act the concerned scholar does not have the opportunity to analysis of report which is very significant part before finalizing the report therefore with these constraints, the coming years will prove the effectiveness of this regulation.